Look, there's two scriptures here because, as Paul Harvey used to say, right, we need the rest of the story. And uh, one of these scriptures I, I looked at and then I thought, well, let's just go back and see what the other gospel says about uh, in the beginning of how the disciples were called. So in Mark 1, as, as Janet's read to us, 14 and 15, Jesus announces the good news. Remember, Mark was one who was short on words or short on paper. He gave you the point real quick, and that's it. Some of the other Gospels have expanded further. So after John was in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. I could preach and stop right there and say, that's the whole sermon. Look, how many of us have something terrible happened to a fellow brother in ministry or a fellow sister in ministry, especially in prison? Jesus knew what this meant. How many of us would go on like life was normal and just now we go out and proclaim good news in capital G also of God? See, uh, for a lot of us, we would proclaim news, but it wouldn't be so good. But see, we see a different way Jesus is teaching. Jesus in verse 15 says, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Look, Jesus is saying, God's had a plan. God's had a plan from beginning. Let me give you simple theology. God made the world. It was perfect. We broke it. God made a plan, so he fixed it. Do we want to follow the plan of fixing, the, fixing things? Repent. Turn from your broken ways of the world. Receive Jesus into your heart. Ask to be forgiven and step into this plan. The plan was for Israel. Israel was a smaller piece. When, Israel, when that plan in Israel was fulfilled, now it was a worldwide plan and mission, which reaches us today. Boy, that went from simple to complex. Sorry. So now Jesus is calling his first disciples. And this is where we're going to be going with a lot of this message. Because who is worthy? I got bad news for everybody, including myself and you over there, too. You're welcome. <laughs> Inclusive ministry means everyone can be included in these moments. Who's worthy? None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy by worldly standards to be anything. All of us are sinners. I, I was corrected uh, last week in, in online class. Fact right here. Uh, the teacher asked a question. The teacher said, so what, so what happens? The professor said, so what happens after we preach the message in the church? <laughs> I, I just thought it was a good, fun moment. I typed in, we all leave and keep on sinning like we didn't go to church. He made me turn my video camera on. He made me look him in the eye, and he tore me up for about five minutes, virtually, with everybody in the class watching. He reminded me that we're all sinners saved by God's grace. He didn't know it. I believe this. I thought it was a fun moment to say something funny. I won't do that again. At least in the near few days, hopefully. So Jesus now, is, as I've been reminded of God's grace this week, Jesus walked behind, beside the Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee was not like uh, going to a cruise port, right, where it was this beautiful place. It might have been like going to one of those places where they don't let you see what's happening at the port by the sea because they want to take you somewhere nice. So Jesus is here, and he sees Simon and his brother Andrew fishing because... They were fishermen. Jesus went by to stop by the fishermen to invite them to be part of this ministry. Now, fishermen, have you ever heard those words like as rough as a sailor? Uh, cussing like a sailor? I don't know. I or fit things into that rough group. Even then, a rough crowd. Jesus, though, went to this rough crowd, and Jesus saw the potential, what God needed. These men were called by God. When God calls you, you can do all you can to resist it, but it don't work. Another day we'll preach a couple sermons on Jonah, remember? Didn't work. 
He tried to go the other way. It didn't work. So God's calling him. Jesus says, come and follow me. I'll send you out, my version says, to fish for people. Tradition says, I will make you fishers of men. Remember that vacation Bible school song from 30 years ago, 40 years ago? I will make you fishers of men. Okay, thank you for helping me. We'll do it another day. At once, see notice, at once they left their nets and followed him. When they'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat. Without delay, he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They had a lucrative business. Fishing might have been a rough trade, but it was a money maker. They stepped away from their money making business to follow this rabbi out into who knows where. You tell me God's grace, this, this grace going ahead of God, this Jesus, they weren't prepared ahead of time, that there was something in their heart said, I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow you. Many of us will follow the wrong thing in life. But the point here is they stepped away to follow the right person, the right Savior. So as they stepped away from their business, we move over. And we move over into John, as was read so well. And we move into John, and John's gospel, John's gospel shows us uh, now the calling of other disciples. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Now finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael, told him, We found the one Moses wrote about in the law, whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus and Nazareth, Joseph's son. Check it out. Every year we get to do this if we use this text. If we contemporize this, what would be said? Kimballsville? Can anything good come from there? Don't worry. I said it last year, and I got transferred to Pennsylvania. Maybe I'll be in West Virginia next week. I don't know. But look, think about it. Can anything good come from here? Let's look at back in the text. We'll get back to this point. Nathaniel speaking, keeping it real. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Philip says, come and see. Nathaniel now is going, sees Jesus. He goes to Jesus. Here's truly an Israelite in whom there's no deceit, Jesus says, of him. How do you know me? Jesus said, I saw you while you were still setting under a fig tree before Philip called to you. This is one of those scriptures that you can have fun with and also have a moment of, oh my. You mean Jesus saw him before he was invited to come to know Jesus. That means Jesus sees us when we're doing right, doing wrong, and everything in between. We got a little song. It's a secular song, but it's kind of fun, right? Talks about a jolly fella. Oh, what do I got here? I got, still got this back here. He knows when you've been naughty and nice, so be good for goodness sake. I don't think the early... Catholic tradition of St. Nicholas just came out of nowhere. Remember, St. Nicholas was trying to remind the little orphans that God loved them, that there was a Savior named Christ, and that he could see, so be good, for goodness sake, right? We've taken it way beyond where this tradition was in the year 1200. But what I'm wanting to share with you is this. I'm wanting to share with you that God sees us. And God sees us even before we acknowledge, know, or want to receive God as Jesus Christ. I've said it before and I'll say it today. How many of you said, well, if I go to church, first of all, I know the building's going to cave in. I said it a month ago. Look, the building's still here. If I haven't been to church for a while and I go in, the building's going to have to cave in. No. No, you don't have that kind of power to tear down a building by your presence. 
God knows what's already been done in our past. God knows what's been done today in our hearts in the last five minutes. God knows where he would like us to end up in the future. God is calling every one of you to a moment of holiness. I know Pastor Jim did the, the Wesley Covenant uh, 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 service, which takes us back to our roots as Methodists, to a moment of holiness, to remember the first of the year, the holiness of God, so we can move closer to God by self-reflection. But look, God already knows what you've done right and wrong. All of us are sinners. I've been directly reminded of this this week. What I want you to know is this. The love of Jesus Christ can transform anything, any community, and any person. And the love of Jesus Christ is what we're here for. We're not here in this church and this setting because we want to keep the lights on, keep the parking lot clear, and just have a place in the community. Look, the abandoned gas station next door has as much value as just a building. This building, yes, I would like for us to keep the lights on. But what our number one mission is, is this. Our number one mission is to be a place of reconciliation so people can come to know Jesus, come and have their lives changed, transformed. And so that when they're transformed, now you want to be like these tough and rough crew. You want to follow the Savior. And you want to model your life after the rabbi, Jesus Christ, the Savior. You want to model everything you do. And you want to model your thoughts after Jesus. My thoughts are no longer my thoughts. They are your thoughts. We want to be able to have our thoughts after God himself. And we want to be able to take that message to the world. See, first of all, you repent. You ask God to forgive you. Receive Jesus. And then what we got to do? We come to church, find a pew, write our name on it. Oh, wait a minute. That's just what we do. Biblically, what we do is we receive Jesus, we come to know God, we walk a little deeper by reading the Bible, by getting connected with others. Ah, in our growth, we become ready to say to somebody, brother or sister, Jesus loves you. My life's been changed. And they say, I don't need that. And what do you say? Come and see. Come and see. You might say, come and see the pastor. He sings off key every week, but he keeps trying. Come and see that none of us are perfect in this church. Come and see that some of us wear fancy clothes and others just have clothes. But we worship together. We love the Lord together. We know that God is wanting us to walk that path with Jesus that walks us to a little bit further of Holiness, a little bit more sanctified day after day. God don't want his church to be empty and broke either, folks. Not broke financially. There's always a way there. God don't want his church broke spiritually. Don't walk around defeated like the devil done beat us up and ruined everything. Because that is not Christian salvation. Christian salvation says that Jesus Christ is has the answers, and he has won. He beat the devil on the cross of Calvary that day. And we walk in that, that Christian love and hope that the devil was destroyed, but he keeps trying to take your joy. Have joy, folks. One of the best things I experienced of going away was sadness of not being here for the cold. But the expectation of joy to come home to Kimballsville. Can anything good come from Kimballsville? Yeah. Lots of good can come from Kimballsville. And I've seen just a little bit of it. Come and see. And you will see the goodness of God right here in your church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time, and I thank you for the fact that you, you, Lord, and you alone, you called Nathaniel. You called Nathaniel, and you said, Lord, that he would see heaven open, the angels of you, Lord, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You gave him a promise that he would be a part of the kingdom, 
in spite of the fact that he was a rough, he was a rough one. He was a sailor, he was a fisherman, and he was there in the community. And no one ever thought Nathaniel would do anything, and he never thought anything of Nazareth. But my, my Lord, how things changed. Lord, how you are to change each of us, how you are to sculpt us to become closer like you so we can be part of this church, so we can have our lives changed also. I pray and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.